welcome back, lovely people. This film I never intended for you to see. Well, that's an odd way to start a presentation, but let me explain. I made a film about alien advanced medical technology. It was effectively bollocks. I was kind of suckered into the story by this character, Dr. Stephen Greer. You've probably seen Dr. Greer on your telly or YouTube. He's really keen on aliens and UFOs and is just way out there. But he did a film that really caught my attention. All about super secret, super advanced military medical technology that can cure you with a magic wand. Greer interviewed this chap, Eric, who told the story about when he was posted to the Antarctica during a deep and dark Antarctica winter, the five technicians running a military facility had to stay alive. There could be no downtime. All five of them were necessary to run this facility, probably a submarine communication base. Unfortunately, Eric had an accident and was put out of commission by injuring a muscle. But in Antarctica, there was a CIA doctor. And according to this story, Eric was healed, possibly using advanced military technology. Some kind of medical technique that isn't publicly available. But it's probably just all rubbish. Let me tell you how I make films. I research stuff, things that get my interest, I think you might be interested in, so I'll make a film about it. But I always post my films first, early cuts, to my Patreon account. Over the years, I've got over 400 incredibly smart Patreons who know their stuff. I let my Patreons look at an early cut and make comments. And I've never had such a bunch of, don't post this film, it's rubbish from very, very smart patrons. It completely phased me. I was intrigued by the story, but I accepted that I got it wrong. Stephen Greer was way out there, and the whole concept of possibly alien advanced military medical technology was just a fantasy. But then, I dug into the subject just to confirm it wasn't true, but what I found was startling. Maybe what Stephen Greer is saying and maybe how Eric was cured actually exists. So today, this is the film I wasn't going to show you. Watch this story and at the end of the film, I'll tell you why I think it's all possibly true. It's a fascinating recount of what happened to a military service technician working on advanced military technology in the Antarctic. As we can all guess, the Antarctic is a vital military base, definitely used for submarine communication technology and maybe other things. And of course, it's an extreme environment, cold, long, dark winters, with no chance if you have a medical emergency to be airlifted to safety during the winter. One of these bases, not named, but the person did say it was originally built by Raytheon, so probably a radar or telecommunication base was manned by five vital service personnel during the long, dark winter. They were all highly trained and classified as A1 vital personnel. And for support, either on their base or in a nearby base, and that's not made clear, there was a medical officer. 
This person doesn't mention the doctor's name, but he describes him as a senior ex-Vietnam medical officer and even served as the main doctor on the Glomar Explorer, the CIA Howard Hughes project that raised the sunken ballistic Soviet submarine. And this doctor was stationed in the Antarctic to keep everybody alive and keep the technology working and serviced. Accidents, no doubt, happened. And this is the amazing story of the treatment he gave after this guy became seriously injured. During the deep, dark, freezing Antarctic winter, one of the vital service technicians of this facility went out to move a 75 gallon drum, possibly of fuel, and ended up really hurting himself. He managed to detach his bicep from the bone here and the bone there. The muscle was torn. He no longer had the ability to raise his arm. It was that serious and no doubt that painful. So he was quickly transported to the Antarctic Medical Center where the doctor examined him and confirmed a ripped bicep. What happened next? is really intriguing. The doctor told this guy that his injury was very serious, that he would no longer have the use of an arm. If it did heal, it would take months or years and it would be extremely painful. But the doctor made another appointment for this vital technician chappy to come back and see him with his damaged arm in 10 days. The telecommunication technician returned to his dormitory, no doubt his arm really hurt, and went to bed. The next day, when waking up, he tried his arm and it functioned perfectly. Movement was restored. And in fact, he could lift things up so possibly he could return to duty. He says, I took it easy for a day and after 48 hours, I was back to normal. So reporting back to the doc, after 10 days, he said, wow, it was amazing. His arm was now fully restored and he was back to vital duties, keeping the equipment fully functioning. What I'm going to tell you next is really fascinating. The doctor said to him, oh, good. I'm pleased the treatment worked. He hadn't given him any treatment. The technician was very perplexed. He was pleased that his arm now was fixed but confused because he had been given no apparent treatment. So I shared that story that you just seen with somebody who knows what they're talking about. My wife, Dorothy, who spent her entire life working in healthcare. And her take on what happened to the guy in Antarctica is very interesting. And she suggested there might be a much more prosaic, simple explanation for the guy with the injured arm. Muscles rip. Muscles also self-attach. And in fact, there's nothing you can do apart from surgery. So there was nothing for the doctor to actually prescribe. He or she was actually right in saying, come back in 10 days and let me know how your arm's getting on because it's quite a serious injury. It's quite possible that sure he damaged part of the muscle, which immobilized the arm and made it very painful. But after a good night's sleep, it reattached and some movement came back and he soon fixed himself. Of course, the answer that it was really advanced alien-based secret medical technology is far more interesting. Hi, are you finding this as intriguing as I did when I first heard the story? Or is it just bollocks? There's only one way I know how to find out. I live in France and I mainly use Google as my search engine. 
but my searches are restricted. You probably subscribe to Netflix and are enjoying the new episodes of Stranger Things like we are, but you only get to see what Netflix allow you to see in your country. Wouldn't it be great if you could watch an unlocked version of Netflix in any country of the world? The US has far more choice on Netflix than in Britain or the EU. And what I'm going to tell you now is startling. So does Google. You are ring fenced in the country that you live in. Type in a search term in France or Germany or Britain or America, and you will get a different set of results. And that's no damn good to find the truth behind stories. You need the world to be your oyster. And to do that, you need a VPN. I happen to use NordVPN because I like it. It works and it's incredibly better value than a lot of other VPN software. A VPN protects your data from prying eyes, but it does something much more than that. It lets you surf the true World Wide Web. You can virtually change your country of origin, unlocking new possibilities for TV, and search engines. Get NordVPN today using this special code Prof Simon for a massive discount and unlock the true World Wide Web. So this got me thinking. There's one other organization that would require an advanced medical officer to treat vital personnel on an extended mission, and that's NASA. And we have a role model, Bones, Dr. McCoy from Star Trek, who can do everything from replacing Spock's brain when it's been removed by aliens to treating an entire planet who's been infected by a deadly virus. Along with Nurse Chapel, Bones pretty well fixed any medical problem. So what are NASA planning for a five crew, three to 12 month Mars mission? I did some research and what I found, I think confirms the Antarctica story. During a 12-month Mars mission, you could have everything from a stubbed toe to their brain being removed by aliens, probably unlikely, but serious medical emergencies that say need an operating theater for internal surgery. Those five crew members represent humanity, the first time that humans have stepped foot on Mars. You don't want to lose them. So what exactly is NASA saying in public or is planning this? One of the crew members is going to have first aid training and there's going to be a first aid box under their seats. Rubbish. That obviously isn't their plans and wouldn't work. I think on a Mars mission, which is very analogous to being based in the Antarctic. Some seriously advanced classified medical technology would be on board that ship. Well, that leaves me with the big question, did it really happen? So I researched military medicine, and for years it's been at the forefront of medical technology, ever since men chopped their arms off in the battlefield. World War I introduced the concept of the field hospital with ER doctors and nurses. World War II introduced the wonder drug, the antibiotics. So there's no reason to think that in the 21st century, 
military medicine isn't really at the forefront of a new technology. The question I asked and wanted to know the answer to is, what is it? And it seems there are two leading fields of new military medical technology. One is remote diagnosis. Very Star Trek, where you can scan a patient, send the data to either a center of excellence or an AI software, they diagnose what's wrong with them and suggest the treatment instantly in the field. So let's follow the big money. Let's follow DARPA and what they're funding is research into fixing wounds at the cellular level. The idea is not to treat the wound superficially, but to go inside the patient. And here's a fascinating project from NASA for their Mars mission. Put the medicine inside your astronauts. You don't know what they're going to suffer from. And you can then release the appropriate drug if and when they become ill. Military medical technology has always been cutting edge. But was the guy's arm fixed by a medical magic wand? So a question for you. Have you ever been treated with one of these miraculous cure devices? Do you work in a field where you have to keep working? Are you a paramedic? I want to get to the truth. Is there a technology out there that can treat us all much faster than conventional medicine? Share what you can, because when I say the truth is out there, I mean it. You hold the key to these mysteries. Thank <laughs> you.